Okay, let's get this show on the road here. Now, the subject is quite large, and that's why I made some flyers, which you basically can go in sequence to see what I'm talking about. On people who don't have a flyer, they can come up here. There's some extra flyers here. So anybody who hasn't got a flyer can come up here and get one here. Now, my talk is actually not just something who happened yesterday. It goes back a few hundred years when the masters decided they come back into the world. They have not been in the world here for about a hundred thousand years. They were here to the Atlantean times, but then things broke down and uh, the whole thing went broke. So they didn't appear anymore and now we were told a few hundred years ago that they are ready to come back and Maitreya is actually the leader of all the masters and he is personally coming into the world to help us to build a better world. Now I just wrote that down that I would like talk what I just said uh, from the past and on your flyer you can see I, I cover a little bit the two first subjects are from the past and from the present and what we expect to be in the future now I'm going back to the late 1800s there was a lady a Russian lady and she was uh, traveling the world she was a rich lady actually her father was a general in the Russian army the reason why I know this is because I'm from Switzerland and he occupied Zurich you know for a while so. but anyway that's just beside the point so this Mrs. Polatsky she started to get telepathic information from a master and she started to write books and they had mainly to do with uh, planetary and human evolution now in the late 1800s there was hardly anybody who knew what she was talking about. We had the Christians, we had the Buddhas, we had the Jews, we had but all the other religions around uh, and, and they had a little monopoly over what's going on. They didn't really tell you what's happening in the world. They just were trying to keep I, I'm not trying to be against religion but they had just their own way of presenting it. They didn't know even at this time about what the world is all about, like the energies in the world. When you look at these boots here, nearly every boot who is exhibit here has something to do with energy, vitamins, or it's all modern history, you know? So the second woman who came in, like Balatsky's book, hardly nobody could read, but Einstein could read it, and on Gandhi. Now, they even say that Einstein got all his ideas for his theories out of her book, and that's called The Secret Doctrine, because she talks about the atoms and how the, uh, that thing functions. So, he, he is the one who, who really probably got the most out of it and the other one was Mahatma Gandhi just to name a couple of big ones he's the one who actually helped free India he went to London as a young guy and uh, but he wanted to become a lawyer and he got involved in this 
and I believe if you go and check on the internet, Gandhi's uncle was actually editing Balatsky's book. So he must have had a pretty close relation to her. The next woman is Alice Bailey. She was an English woman, again from a very high descent, from a, like, like a, a royalty type. And she was going to she, she, she was going to India to teach people Christianity and then a master's what happened, what happened to this now here? See now we got them Okay, I will hold it. Maybe it's better this way. So the uh, master was, um, uh, an ascended master was talking to her and asked her if she would be willing to dictate for him books or write books for him. And finally she agreed. Uh, and her books are really the ones I read the most, which really do interest me the, the most. And they mainly cover the... Um, uh, it relates to solar system, meditation, healing, spiritual psychology, and astrology. So she basically gave us uh, an information how the whole world works, which basically religion didn't tell you that. Maybe the Hindus a little bit, but that was about all. Now. We're going down to the present time where it starts here and the flight starts with number one. And today it's Benjamin Krem. He's a gentleman, lives in London, England. And he is 90 years old now. He does that for about 40 years already. He again got approached by a master. He was trained to telepathically communicate with this master. And today, what Benjamin Krem does, he is the editor of Share International. And he is actually representing, if you want to call it so, the spiritual hierarchy. Like he, if you have a question about anything relating Maitreya or, or anything supernatural happens to you, you can write to Share International and they basically, he, he will then give you an answer. Yes, that was coming from a master. Sometimes it's Master Jesus, sometimes it's a master from Tokyo, you know? But uh, th th there are always masters who make these this supernatural things happen. Now, Maitreya's teachings. Uh, on top left corner you see a hand of his. I, I will tell you a little later about the hand. Under the right hand is where he appeared in Nairobi. Now in April 88 Maitreya began to present forecast for the world events, fragment of his teachings. And this information was published in many news magazines. And now, what is Maitreya's purpose in the world? I mentioned already that he's the master, he's the head of the masters, and he's basically here to further prepare humanity for his emerge and to help us understand the spiritual law governing our universe. Because we are now coming to an age where we are so advanced that we can start to understand it or know what he's all talking about. Like 2,000 years ago when Jesus was here, uh, actually Jesus was also overshadowed by Maitreya, but nobody could understand all these energies which are in, the world is governed by. Now in 88, that's the way Maitreya appeared for the first time 
in Nairobi on a Christian gathering for about five, six thousand people. He came right out of the blue, talked for about 15 minutes, and then he disappeared. Now, the um, people were very surprised on, on this news got all over the world in all the major networks like CNN and BBC. Now, of course, people forget quickly and don't want to believe, you know, or the things go very quickly away because also Jesus or every master or God, what you want to call them, had to perform certain miracles in order that people would sustain believing in him. And uh, today, you, because Benjamin Krem has now this connection with his master, if you see something which you think is supernatural, you can write to him and he will then give you an answer if it is a supernatural thing or not. Now, that's uh, just some pictures. I hope you can see them. They are where pictures were sent in and he would then answer. Like 1997, a red calf was born and there hasn't been one since 70 AD. Now that's a long time back. I, th I think that's in the Jewish religion. That's a very famous thing. On the right hand side, you see a white buffalo, which is for the Native American. Uh, I think a white buffalo only appears, according to statistic, only six millions per one. And you know, there are not so many buffaloes around anymore. Uh, uh, the other picture is uh, water. Uh, and there are, the other ones are for um, the light pictures you see on the walls. Sometimes anywhere in a building, all of a sudden a picture appears. That's when people write him and ask if this was a sign, you know, from one of the masters, and then he will answer to them. Here again, th th that's a very beautiful cross light. Here is a Hindu statue. That's quite interesting. In 1995, many Hindu people are here. They, Hindu statues, started to drink milk. And I have a lady who came to our meditations once here. Her statue started to drink milk. I think some people said they nearly run out of milk in one time. So I don't, I don't know. I don't take that for um, granted. But the next with the tomato here is uh, in Arabic. I can't read it. But um, what it said, I think for it, for it, there is only one God, Mohammed. It's the messenger. So basically, there is not just one. There's a teacher for every religion, and it's basically Attention, Olga Toscano, please report to the information booth. Thank you, Olga Toscano. The information booth is at the front of the house. Okay, the, the, the next picture here is um, on the right hand sees, it, you see a, a face of Jesus appears on a street thumb and again Benjamin Krem confirmed that the master Jesus made this picture. Uh, on the left is a star, I'm coming to the star after. A bleeding Madonna, you know, like a, the Holy Mary or whatever we call it. Um, all of a sudden it started to bleed and a lot of people have seen that so that was also confirmed um, another thing Maitreya said is healing water wells many people know that they exist already like in Lourdes or the Catholics they have quite a few uh, and this is one in Calcutta, Mexico it, it, it's actually the Christians go there uh, sometimes there were 10,000 people a day going there. But the reason why I put that one down is they bottle this up or they put it in a tablet form. Somehow they can uh, produce it in tablet forms. Uh, uh, and it has some kind of a special meaning to me. The reason is 
I have a grandson who is autistic. And if anybody knows about autism, uh, these uh, children or these people don't really recover very well. And you know, he's taking now these tablets for quite a while, and all of a sudden, the last eight months, he has started such a tremendous improvement. I nearly could cry. Okay, we go ahead to the changes in the water, weather pattern already occurring as a result of earth warming. Now that was predicted in the year 1988. And I mean, you all know that uh, this weather is going bad right now. It's going so bad that Maitreya says we got to fix it. If we don't fix it in the next 15 years, we will go down the tube, you know. Um, the reason why, um, oh, that's another prediction. This prediction is about, uh, Maitreya made a prediction in 1988. Now these are these predictions he makes, has made. He said there will be a world stock exchange crash which will begin in Japan and then will bring down the whole world stock exchange. Now in 88 everybody laughed about it but the Japanese stock market was at 40,000 points today it's only about 9,000 and the other markets are all nearly uh, on the teeter of collapsing. They nearly collapsed already in uh, about three years ago. Uh, they fixed it with just pumping in money. Now, my Maitreya's predictions are accurate because he sees them already happening. For him, there is no past, no future, no present. He sees everything simultaneously. What he cannot really do is predict the timing exactly because first we have free will. He sees it happen, but it could be maybe 10 or 20 years later or 100 years earlier or whatever. So that's something he has not control over. Another prediction he made is um, about uh, Nelson Mandela in South Africa. Everybody knows Nelson Mandela was uh, the president of South Africa, but he was for many, many years in prison. So already in 1988, I believe he appeared to Nelson Mandela in the prison cell. If you go on Share International in the magazine, you will find stories about it in there because the Share International magazine you, you can go in an archive and it brings you all stories for we'll go back for quite a long time. How's the world today? Now, there's a shift coming in the world today. And that goes more in, in, into the horoscope type, you know. The, we are moved out of the Pisces age and we go, you know, the astrology, we go now into the Aquarius age. And the way we people are actually doing things on this planet is we get energy fed to us from the universe. And there's seven types of energy, they're, they're all different. But that's why we have so many different personalities. You know, I have two daughters and they're completely different. They they have uh, totally different personalities and that's because of uh, these different energies are coming in. But I can't explain you all this because that's a long thing, you know. And so if you want, you can learn more in books from Alice Bailey or Benjamin Krem. Now, we're coming down. Why I think it's, we're going close to the wire is in, 19, uh, in 2008, Benjamin Cram announced that he got a message that uh, a look for a bright star 
in, in this uh, look now for the biggest miracle of all. There is a very near future, a large bright star will appear in the skies visible to all through the naked eye. That was in December 2008. Now people started to look in the sky. You don't see it every time. I just took a few pictures out. If you come to our booth, you, that's what we have. You, they're not just funny pictures, you know. They, they are pictures mainly from stars, which people send in to share international, and then he will say yes, that was a star or that was not a star. So this star appears in all kind of forms. Now that's one of the big ones. That was in 211 when uh, in the Middle East, in Jerusalem, right over the big church in Jerusalem, there was this uh, big plump of white light up there, sitting there for about ten, five or ten minutes, and then whoop, disappeared. Well, many people have made photographs or have made videos of it, so you can check that on the internet, that exists too. Uh, that's another most recent one on the Olympics. Uh, you, you can see on top there, there's a little blimp. And Benjamin Cram confirmed that this uh, was Maitreya's light ship. Now, this thing's, the reason why it appears on all over the world, they say he is using four light ships so he can continuously having um, uh, it on every place anytime in the world and this one in Jerusalem if I go quick back uh, we were told that was basically similar as when Jesus was born with the three stars nobody I never could understand that story that they could follow the star but now we know it was a spaceship and they basically just followed them these are crop circles. They are appearing all over the world, quite a lot in England. They are in a cereal field or corn field or, or, or um, wheat fields. And their pictures, nobody would be possible to make. They're right out. And the, actually, there's energy in this. There's some other pictures I'm showing here. Got to watch the time. That's my favorite picture of the star. This appeared in Norway in uh, 2009. President Obama just went up there for uh, the World Conference for Climate Change and that's when the picture appeared. So I believe that was a sign that we should smarten up and, and change the climate. And now Maitreya steps forward. We were told in January 2010 that he is starting now giving interviews on TV. He doesn't give the interview on... He, he doesn't come out and say, I'm Matreya, I'm the leader of the world. He doesn't want to do that because if he does this, he infringes our free will. So he is just talking. He has talked already quite a number of times in America, that's where he were, we were told many years ago that he will do his first interview. He is talking in Mexico. Right now he's in Brazil. And, uh, but there will come a day when there will be uh, a day of decoration. So the question and answer, how long will there be between Maitreya's first TV appearance in America on the day of declaration? So we had his first interviews already, we had many interviews already, but we haven't had the Day of Declaration. Now the Day of Declaration is something very special. Okay, I, I, the next picture. The, and then he says, that depends on us. It depends on the response of humanity. Again, because we have free will, it will not just come automatically, we basically have to agree to it. Now, on the day of declaration, when Maitreya speaks to the whole world telepathically, he will he see, we will see him on TV, 
will the majority of people will be able to understand the meaning of what or will the majority of people be able to understand what he's talking about and what he's talking about is he will be talking about the history of humanity the high source from which we came from the evolutionary process the law of cause and effect the law of rebirth and the need for harmlessness, that we don't kill each other, basically. That, that what it means. Um, the logical imbalance is his number one prior priority. The fate to help the starving, and the solution through sharing, on the creation, therefore, of peace and justice. Now, that's the next one will not materially be rejected by most of the people uh, uh, and that's the problem we have you know when Galileo was here nobody believed in that the earth was not flat that it was round you know that nearly throw him in jail and I think that's the same thing today we we don't really want to believe what it is but what he says is we have free will we can accept or reject his um, reject him. He himself has said, in, he has about a hundred messages get out, many will follow me as, and see me as their guide, many will not. If we reject Maitreya saying it all sounds like very nice but it's just utopia, I've too, I have too much lose, to lose when you, when, why should I give good to the developed world. What have they ever done for us? You know, that's a common thing we hear. So, the answer to this, he gives basically, uh, there will come a point where the market forces, and I believe we're very close to this market point, uh, that these forces will control the whole world's economy. And that's where we talk about this collapse. Want the commercialization, which is the tool of all the market forces. I mean, if you ever watch TV lately, you get half of it is commercial. They just bore, get you, get you with commercials. And this will cripple the economy of the world. That will bring a world stock market exchange crash. Now. We already are teetering around with it. We nearly had this crash already happening three years ago. They pouring money in like crazy and they still haven't fixed it. And Maitreya has predicted that already in 1988. And another problem we have is uh, complacency. As long as we don't get burned in the back, we, we don't really want to listen. What will fix the problems of the world? Now, Maitreya says again, it's actually so simple. He, he just says, honesty of mind, serenity of spirit, and detachment. Now, uh, that's not really a lot to think about, but it, it, it's very difficult in today's world to, to, to achieve this. But nevertheless, I mean, nobody's perfect and we're trying to work for that. Um, that is just a little uh, uh, indication about Chair International. All the names of the languages you see on the left, you can get a part or the whole of the magazine Chair International. So it's presented in many, many countries on this is in the languages which you can get information, mostly on the internet. Okay, that covers the story. Now, if you know my boots or our boots name is called Transmission Meditation. And Transmission Meditation is a meditation which is actually a service meditation. We do these meditations not to meditate for ourselves, for our parents or for our children, 
we do this to give service to the world. Now anybody can do this meditation. All it's needed is three people. Now, if three people are sit together, on they say the great invocation, which is a prayer. You can also find that on the internet, or if you come to my booth, you, I can give you a flyer where the great invocation is on. Then, the meditation is very, very simple. All you have to do is sit down and concentrate on the Ashna center. That's a point right between your eyes. Now, it is very simple, but it's very difficult to fulfill because your mind is busy. And to sit down a whole hour to do that is nearly impossible. Like in North America, it's three or four minutes people can really concentrate on this point in an hour when they start. So it's not so simple, but every minute counts. Now what happens with the energy is the master send them to us because we have free will. We do basically step down the energy, transmit it to our level, and then this energy will be stored. Or the master can use it right away where it is. So it's not your own energy. You, the energy cannot be used by yourself. It's strictly a service meditation. So you, the only benefit you will get out of it, you actually, your evolutionary process is speeding up faster than any other one. If you do regular meditation or you do transmission meditation, you have about a 10 times more speed in your evolutionary process with this. It also will help you feel better. On the bottom in blue, if you go to Share International, I think um, that's the YouTube, where you have three little segments of an eight-minute, um, eight-minute uh, video, which, which explains a little more about how the transmission meditation works. But just to remind that anybody can have a meditation group, as long as you're three people. Or you can call on, on the website you have here or, or send an email and we will tell you, direct you where to go. Now, just to make it a little funny or interesting, last year I had a, a ch Japanese girl here in Toronto. And the Japanese people, they can meditate much better than we can here. So anyway, uh, I brought it to one of our meditation sessions. Uh, and I said, well, who you meditate with? Because I know they have a lot of groups in Japan. She said, well, mostly I do it from home. And I said, well, who you meditate with? And she said, with my grandmother, with my mother, and myself. <laughs> so, anyway, that's just beside the point. Uh, this one is just a picture of Benjamin Cram again. This goes back to the magazine. This is the format when you have a question. He, you can write it to him and, and, and then if it relates to some of these things, he will write you back then and give you the answer if it's what you were thinking it is. 